Hey everyone, I'm Mr. A. And hey everyone, I'm Mr. A. And in this video, I want to talk to you about vector equations in two dimensions. Now, if you found this video by itself, there's a second video that goes along with it. If you've already started watching the second video, then you're here to decompose the question with me. This is a question that I wrote myself, and it's a really interesting question because you have to do a lot of deconstructing to kind of figure out what's going on before you can get into the meat of the question and start going through the different pieces it asked you about. So take a minute and pause the video, read through this. I'm just going to go right ahead. Um, so you pause the video so you have time to read it. The first thing we need to do is figure out what we know and what we still need to know. So notice they're giving me times like 11.30 a.m. and then 11.39 a.m. 40 seconds before, you know, 3 minutes and 53 seconds after the bandit is initially spotted. So the first thing I need to do is get control over time. I need to get control over the time. I'm going to make a decision about how I want to keep track of things that's going to make it easy for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count time in seconds. Time is going to be in seconds, T in seconds, past 11.30. Okay, so that means 11.30 a.m. Let's be specific. So that means that t equals 0 is 11.30 a.m. This is going to make everything so much easier because now instead of something being like 11.38, it's just going to be 8 times 60, 480 seconds, right? 40, 480 past 11.30. So what do we know? At time equals 0, we do actually know where the Aberdeen Fisher is, right? This ship is at negative 1,000, 100. Okay, so that's from that first piece of information. Now, I'm also making a small assumption there, right? What place is at negative 1,100? Well, as soon as I make that decision, I'm making the decision to place this radio station, right, or radar station, where? At the origin. So let's put the radar station at 0, 0, at the origin. That allows us to place the fissure at negative 1,100. I do not know where the other ship is, right? I don't know the position of the bandit yet. What's the next time that I know something about? Well, at t equals 100, they tell me not where the Aberdeen Fisher is, but they do tell me where the bandit is. The bandit is at 1600, comma, negative 699. Okay. What else do I know about this problem? Well, let's see. So that's the bandit, 1600, negative 699. A radio communication from the bandit indicates the ship is holding a constant velocity of 5 meters per second. Okay, so I'm going to put that over here. Bandit velocity, so bandit velocity equals 5 meters per second. That might be important. Okay, let's keep reading through here. 40 seconds before 11.39 a.m. All right, so that's 11.38 and... 20 seconds, right? So what is that? 11.38 and 20 seconds. Well, 38 would be 8 minutes. That's 480 seconds plus another 20. That's 500 seconds. Okay, so at 500 seconds, they're telling me that the fissure passes 99 meters due north from the bandit. So that's kind of interesting, right? T equals 500. What is it telling me? Well, T equals 500. It's not actually telling me where the Aberdeen fissure is. It's telling me that it's 99 meters due north of the bandit. And they don't tell me where the bandit is either, right? So I could write that like this. I could say, well, I don't know where the fissure is, but it's the same x coordinate as the bandit, and then it's the y coordinate of the bandit plus 99. Does that make sense? Right? It's at the same x coordinate because it's due north, and how much north? 99 meters. And of course, the bandit, I don't know, you know, the bandit is just b of x, comma, b of y. I don't know where it is. So we can, we can write that over here, I suppose, just to be explicit about it. But I don't really know what's happening there yet. And then let's see, 3 minutes and 53 seconds after the bandit is initially spotted. Okay, hold on a minute. 3 minutes and 53 seconds. Well, 3 minutes is 180 seconds. 53 plus 180, that's 233. So 233 seconds after the bandit is initially spotted, how long is that? Well, the bandit was spotted at 100 seconds. So now we're actually talking about 333 seconds. Does that make sense? So I actually want to squeeze that in here because that's going to come before t equals 500. So I'd like to make a little bit of room here, and I'm going to squish this in. So at t equals 333, they're telling me 3 minutes 53 seconds, bandit spotted. Bandit passes due east to the radar station and is closer to the station than when it first seen. So I don't know exactly where the bandit is, but it's something comma zero, right? If it's going to pass due east, then it's just directly to the east. That means the um, 
x coordinate is the only thing that's changing, right? The y coordinate has to be the same as the radar station, which is to say zero. So here's what I've got so far. The question I have to ask myself is which ship do I know the most about? Do I know more about the Aberdeen Fisher or do I know more about the Bandit? I know a lot more about the Bandit, right? Because I know where the Bandit is at 100 seconds. And at 333, I know part of the Bandit's story. So let's start to piece this together. If I were to draw a little picture of the bandit's change in position, right? Let's say this triangle is going to represent the direction of travel for the bandit. And of course, it would be a right triangle. And let's see, what do I know about the bandit? It starts off at 1600, comma, negative 699. And it ends up at, I don't know what, comma, zero. Okay, so I don't know what. But that zero, I do know. That means that I can figure out the delta y here, right? What's my delta y have to be? It's got to be 699, doesn't it? Because I went from negative 699 up to zero. Okay. And there's something else we know about this triangle. We know how long this trip took. How long did it take for the bandit to get from this position to this position? Careful, it's not 333. You got to subtract that 100. It's only 233. So I'm going to put in here this triangle that my delta t is 233. Right? That's how long it takes to get from there to there. So I can actually figure out the hypotenuse of this triangle with that information. Because what else do I know about the bandit? It's velocity, 5 meters per second. So if the bandit is traveling 5 meters per second for a total of 233 seconds, then 5 times 233 tells me that the distance it traveled was 1,165 meters. Well, wait a minute. Now I've got a right triangle, and I know two of the sides. I know the delta y side. I know the hypotenuse. That means I should be able to find the delta x side without any trouble, right? So how do I work that out? Well, you could do Pythagorean theorem. Delta x is just going to be, right, delta x is the square root of 1165 squared minus 699, sorry, plus 699 squared. And you get delta x equals, um, where was it, 932. Now, there is a question about this delta x. This was the square root, so this is actually plus or minus 932. How do we decide which one to go with? So that was actually the second part of the clue. Remember here it said the bandit is closer to the station than when it first was seen? Okay, so when was the bandit first seen? Sorry about that. When was the bandit first seen? First seen here at t equals 100. And now it's supposed to get closer to the origin. So if that delta x is positive, where is the bandit going? Off to the right. Is that going to get closer to the origin? No. So that has to be negative, right? So must be, let me put a little star here, right? Must be that the delta x is in fact negative 932. Uh, so it gets closer to the origin, right? So now I know this part of my triangle, negative 932. Now, that's my delta x in this triangle, but this triangle isn't per unit of time, it's per 233 units of time, right? So that's not a particularly great way to measure time. How do I really want to measure things? Just one second. So what I want to do is take this triangle and just scale it down. I want to scale the whole thing down by 233. So I want to get to a delta t of just one, right? So I divide everything by 233. That's going to become five. This is going to become, <clears throat> excuse me, negative four and this is going to become 3. And all I'm doing is scaling down by, you know, I'm, I'm, this, this is, you know, this is 1165 over 233, right? This is 699 over 233, and this is, uh, what is it, negative 932 over 233. So all I'm doing is scaling that whole triangle down to a delta t of 1, and now I know everything about the bandit. I know it travels negative 4 and up 3 every one second, right? So its velocity vector is negative 4, 3. This is the velocity vector of the bandit, velocity vector. So I can now write the equation for the bandit. I can figure out what the x and the y position is for the bandit at any moment in time. But in order to do it, I need to know where the bandit's initial position was, right? I know that its initial position plus t times its velocity vector, negative 4, 3, is going to tell me where the ship is for any moment of time. The question is, where did it start? So the easiest way to figure this out, in my opinion, is just roll time backwards a little bit. So up here, remember, we knew where the bandit was 100 seconds in, and I know that it's moving to the left 
four every one of those seconds and up three every one of those seconds. So if it's 100 seconds, that's to the left 400 and up 300, right? So where did it have to start if it moved to the left 400 and end up at 1600? Well, it must have started at 2000, right? I could just roll time backwards here. And where would it have had to start if it moved up 300 and ended up at negative 699? It would have had to have start at negative 999. And there's my initial position for the bandit. So I can plug that in right here. 2000 is the initial X position. Negative 999 is the initial Y position. And there's my uh, vector equation for the position of the bandit. Now we're going to do the very same thing with the Aberdeen Fisher. We're going to say, okay, what do we know about that one? Whoops. Um, so let's see. I'm going to copy some of this information here. What am I going to take with me? I'm going to take all my positions and my assumptions and my shit. So drop that into this new file. Okay. And I think I'll also take the bandits vector equation. That's also going to be helpful, I think. All right. So, whoops. There it is. Okay, so there's my bandits equation, and I want to figure out where my Aberdeen Fisher is. So, I knew where the Aberdeen Fisher was in terms of the bandit for 500, right? At t equals 500, I know that the Aberdeen Fisher is directly above the bandit. So, all I need to do is start by figuring out, well, where's the bandit at 500, right? So, instead of b of x and b of y, let's get those actual coordinates. All we need to do is plug in t equals 500. So, if you just do t equals 500, then what you'll get is that b of x and b of y, if you plug into that equation over there, works out to, let's see, um, oops, 0, 501. So that is my bandit's position, 0, 501. But now that I know the bandit's position, I can easily figure out the Aberdeen Fisher's position, right? So the Aberdeen Fisher is bandit, and then bandit plus 99. So the bandit is zero, that means the Aberdeen Fisher is also at zero in the x, and bandit plus 99 is 51 plus 99, or 600, okay? So now I've got the Aberdeen Fisher's second position, which means now I know two points for the Aberdeen Fisher. And that's gonna set me up to figure out everything else about that ship. So let me just quickly duplicate this slide, and then I can make a little bit of room by erasing some stuff here. So let's see. Let's now focus on the Aberdeen Fisher. What do I know about it? Well, I know that it started off at negative 1,100, ended up at 0, 0,600. So let's draw that triangle. Okay, so we're at negative 1,000, comma 100, and then we are at 0, comma 600. What was the delta t? How much time transpired inside of this triangle? zero all the way to 500. So that's a 500 second triangle right there. Okay, well my delta x and delta y are easy to figure out. Delta x, negative 1,000 to zero, that's 1,000. Delta y, from 100 to 600, that's 500. So all I need to do is pop in a Pythagorean theorem here. Excuse me, I don't need Pythagorean theorem. I just want to scale this down by 500, right? I want to scale down to a triangle of delta t. A little squishy, I apologize. Right, I want to get my triangle to have a delta t of just 1. Well, that's super easy. 500 divided by 500 will get me 1. 500 divided by 500 will get me 1 in the y direction. And 1,000 divided by 500 will get me 2 in the x direction. So there we go. That's my velocity vector for the Aberdeen Fisher. To the right 2 and up 1 each second. Now I can write the vector equation for the Aberdeen Fisher. a sub x and a sub y is simply going to be the initial position of that vessel, negative 1,100. And then for every unit of time, I'm going to add to that two in the x direction and one in the y direction. So I hope you found that helpful. Now that you've got the setup, you can head back over to the other video. I'll put a link right at the bottom here for you to jump to that to get the rest of the problem and to go through the rest of the solution. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.